I think he he he's dangerous. He's always he's always been dangerous. I believe he's he's the guy to beat in Australia. To be honest, um, you know he held that belt for a while. I'm pretty sure he has been the champion since I really made my start in MMA. I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong on that timeline. Um, but he's been the guy for a while. So, you know, it's it's kind of like unfortunate for him that he hasn't already been called up to the UFC, I believe, you know. Um, he, I think he, he deserves his shot, but, you know, he's the guy for me right now. And, uh, you know, if I beat him, I, it definitely definitely puts me in a great position to, uh, to take that next step and put, put forward my case that I belong in there, you know. First of all, introducing our challenger. Out of the uh, blue uh, corner. He's going to step in and he does it all over. Let's bring on the boo. This is Eternal MMA. All right, everybody, welcome back and thank you for joining me here once again on another edition of the Eternal Insiders podcast. We are being joined today by the man set to challenge John Martin Fraser for his Eternal Middleweight Championship at Eternal 83, that big card coming up March 16 on the Gold Coast. He is the owner and trainer at the Fight Center in Brisbane, the former Muay Thai world champion himself. Ben Johnson joining me back on the show here once again. Ben, how is things going for you up north, brother, uh, in preparation for this massive fight coming up? Yeah, no, I'm going good, bro. I I cannot complain. It's, uh, It's been quite good. I've had some real good bodies with... Darcy Vendy, Nick Kepu, the same same weight divisions and all of having fights at similar times, so it's worked out really well. Um, no, nah, it's been it's been great, man. I can't yeah, I can't complain about my camp at all. No, I mean, speaking of bodies, man, I mean, you had the privilege. I don't know if it was your privilege or whether it was the other way around, but on his tour uh, down under in Australia, you got to mix it up a little bit with John Jones. Uh, can you talk about what that was experience that what that experience was like, uh, mixing it up with him? Uh, it looked pretty cool, man. The videos and everything going up, uh, seeing John. Uh, with all the boys, that must have been a, a good time. Yeah, no, it was cool, bro. He's, uh, yeah, he's obviously the greatest ever MMA athlete, you know. Um, so to sort of go, well, if you would have told me, I remember watching him at, you know, the pub when he first won that title. I think it was uh, with Shogun. Mm. I remember watching that fight. Um and that was like the first time I'd ever heard of John Bones. If you'd have told me like right then, like that guy's going to be doing a seminar in your gym, you know, not that it's like a huge milestone or anything like that. Like it's cool whatever, though, man. You know? like, yeah, but it's very cool. Yeah, it's it's very cool. So um, yeah, bro, that was that was cool. Just that in itself, and then he, obviously just having him and like it's you know he was using me for a lot of demonstrate a lot of the demonstrations and sort of just like you just realize that we're all we're all just people, you know, um, there's nothing special about him. There's nothing special about me or anybody, you know, just looking at him like, he's just another dude. He just happens to be really good at fighting, you know? <laughs> so I think it's some value in that. Just like being around those people a lot, you realize that we're all the same. I mean, did you size him up a little bit? Cause you guys are similar height, right? I mean, what, you're six mm. foot four. I'm pretty sure John's six, four there or thereabouts. He looks a little bit different compared to what he looked back at that Shogun fight. Obviously, fighting up in heavyweight a little bit. Yeah, I'm assuming you've seen him ahead of time in his fights recently. But was it a bit of a like a strange contrast, sort of seeing like how big he is now compared to what you're sort of used to seeing him in his fights in uh, in the past? Yeah, I, I guess so. Like he's he's definitely not in the same shape as he was back then. Like you said, big boy. Um, yeah, he's 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 a bit bigger for sure. Uh, but height wise, like I don't know, bro. I, it always makes you wonder. Um, I. I, I I thought he was listed as like six five, um, but I'm pretty sure I was taller than him. Um, but I reckon there's a bit of bit of smoke and mirrors that happens in the in the fight game all the time. It has like to they be. say Ty- yeah, you know they say Tyson Fury is uh, like what, six, six nine or whatever. Or, yeah, six yeah, ten something. Like, yeah, whatever it is. Like yeah, it's wild. Eh? It's yeah. Something ridiculous, you know. And then he's seen a photo of him and Izzy, and he's like got this much height on Izzy. You know, True. And you're like, yeah, I don't know, you know. Yeah, fair enough. I reckon there might might be a little bit of a little bit of just dramatization about his height and all and stature in general. You know, I reckon they do it a bit. No, I mean just in terms of the preparation, everything, man. I mean it's you know pretty well sort of known that you know you split your time between obviously your gym at the fight center. You know, speaking of Izzy, you were a lot of the time going back over to New Zealand 
and training at City Kickboxing. Is that something that you've had the chance to do for this camp or is it pretty much exclusively on home soil for this one? The camp itself I've done here. Um, it, I actually, sorry, I went there at the start of the year. So I got to uh, check out the new gym. They've just got this new facility. It's huge. Um, and they're still like in the process of tidying up all the loose ends and all that. Um, it was a bit of a construction site still when I was there. But they've, uh, yeah, it's an awesome, it's an awesome new new gym. And they were running out of room at the old one. It was like getting pretty hectic in sparring. You'd look around, and there's like no room. It's packed, so it's like, yeah. Bro, you know, you got one of the best gyms in the world that's known for their range and footwork and, you know, <laughs> being able to manage distance fighting in like each partner has two square meters. You know, you got one of those jigs, you got one of yeah. those tummy mats. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're on one end, I'm on the other. And that's pretty much like the space it used to be. So yeah, they needed it. They needed to go to the new spot, but it's awesome. Uh, anyway, I went, this, I went there at the start of the year, not technically in fight camp yet. Um, but yeah, I've done all my training here just because, man, it's been so busy. Like it's been so hard to get away. Like I was saying earlier, you know, I got Darcy um, just fought a week or two ago and then Nick is fighting this weekend and, you know, Chelsea Hackett's fighting soon and, Max is fighting and there's just, there's just been like uh, so much, you know, Dar uh, sorry, Sam Dobb just recently came over, but he's been in fight camp with us too, his first fight camp with us. Um, so it's just been, it's been very hard to get away. Uh, plus on top of that, the gym is just busy, bro. It's just, it's so busy. Um, so yeah, it, it, it does get hard to get away, but I'm lucky, man. Like we've got, we've got great bodies here now. So I like, even if I can go only get over there, not as often as I would have would like, I'm still able to get over there every now and then, and I can I can put on the blanks over here. And now you're training, you're training obviously five rounds for this one, man. Obviously being a title mm. fight, your last fight of course was a main event, but you know scheduled for three rounds. Of course, we didn't go that far, but just in terms of the preparation, how different is it sort of this time around training for five rounds? Is it a big contrast compared to your camps gone by? It, it's miserable. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how else to put it. It's it's miserable, bro. Like we, you know, the yeah, it's just it sucks for longer. That's all it is, you know. And then you think with the five rounds of knowing, you you have to have gone through the worst thing possible in the gym, you know. Like you can't. For me, always, I can't go into a fight thinking, I hope it doesn't go bad, you know. Um, so you sort of just try and somehow replicate that in the gym of just the, the worst possible thing you could imagine. And it lasts for 25 minutes and it's the whole time. You just, part of you just wishes that it, it wasn't happening, <laughs> but you know, you, you, yeah, you do it enough times you get used to it. And you know, on the night, yeah, you prepare for the worst. Now, I mean, we've seen pretty much in your short MMA career, we, we've seen a bit of everything from you now, man. Cause I mean, you know, former Muay Thai world champion, you start, your account opening uh, as a as a mixed martial artist with three submission wins, which is uh, almost pretty unheard of, I guess, with someone uh, from your background and your caliber. Uh, but you did get to come back in your last fight and get the win, you know, via knockout, via TKO. I'm just curious, like as a former Muay Thai champion, you know, as a as a thoroughbred striker and everything, you know, that's where you butted your bread in the past. Was it just that bit more sweet for you to get the win done in that fashion? Or does it not make any difference to you? No, it doesn't. It really doesn't, bro. Um... In fact, I kind of, I kind of like it, like getting the submissions because mix it up a little bit, yeah. Yeah, I mean, something different. Know, I've, I've, I've had like thirty Muay Thai fights, bro. I've, I've done all of that, you know. Um, so it's, it's like everybody's dangerous, you know, on their feet. Everybody, anyone who's especially at this level that we're at, no one is bad at anything. Um, but you know, for me, I want to prove I want to prove myself to myself as a grappler, not just as a striker. I feel like I feel like I've done that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, because you, you've trained all around the world and competed all around the world, right? And I mean, you obviously we talk about your Muay Thai background and everything, but I know you know in years gone by, you put a lot of stock into your Jiu Jitsu and everything as well. Um, you know, how how is that all sort of coming along? I think at last time you were a purple belt. I can't remember where you were sort of at, but you know, how are you enjoying just sort of that leveling up part of your game? Uh, in, in terms of, you know, learning the jujitsu to complement your striking skills? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's uh, it's funny because when I started, it was, it was you're right, it was like jujitsu. I'm like, Muay Thai, a bit of jujitsu, sweet, we're laughing. I'm a mixed martial artist, you know? Uh, but it's it's not like that, you know? There's there's so much in between. In fact, I was, I'm a brown belt now. 
Uh, but I was a purple belt when I first went. Pardon to... me, we've we've come a long way. Sorry, it's, yeah, we're a brown belt, uh, man. You, you could, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Forgive me, I knew no. that information. I'm I'm skipping back in time here, so you know. Oh, please no, continue. It's, it's all good. M- MMA, you know, the belt doesn't matter so much in in MMA. You know, um, I believe anyway. But uh, yeah, my, I was a purple belt when I first went to city kickboxing, and there was guys that I was. Uh, sparring with and they get me down. I'm like, all right, cool. I'll do my jujitsu. And it just wasn't happening, you know, and I was extremely confused as to why, but that, keep in mind, that was like my first time really doing MMA. Um, you know, I was in that gym. I, I was convinced I was going to be an MMA fighter and I went over and jumped in over there. I was like, Oh man, this is actually a lot harder. This is going to be a big transition, you know? Um, but yeah, the jujitsu is definitely, uh, definitely a uh how do you say like it's a cool tool to have in the in the belt but it's not i'm not using jujitsu if that makes sense it's got to be like mma grappling. just an all-around grappling side of things yeah like just like the wrestling yeah. everything together the transitions and all that sort of stuff yeah that's right yeah true i, I mean we say that i mean again finishing your first three wins uh by a rear naked choke i mean it was it was a very cool thing to see and i think it was kind of you speak of it as a bit of a tool I guess it was sort of a bit of an unknown tool for your opponents and that sort of thing. It maybe caught them sort of off guard. So it's, it's definitely not a secret anymore. So we're looking forward to you seeing you mix it up with everything going mm. forward, uh, not least, you know, with this fight coming up with John Martin Fraser. And speaking of John, obviously he uh, reclaimed that title back with his last performance uh, at, uh, at Eternal 81, I believe it was. Uh, it looked fantastic doing it, got the job done in the first round. I'm sure you've seen that fight. Uh, if so, mm. what did you make of John's performance and what do you make of him uh, as an opponent? Man, like you know, it's it's a hard one. Um, with in terms of the performance, there's not heaps to take away from a from a short one. Mm. Um, I think he he he's dangerous. He's always he's always been dangerous. I believe he's he's the guy to beat in Australia. To be honest, um, you know, he held that belt for a while. I'm pretty sure he has been the champion since I really made my start in MMA. I'm pre- I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong on that timeline. Um, but he's been the guy for a while. So, you know, it's it's kind of like unfortunate for him that he hasn't already been called up to the UFC, I believe, you know. Um, he I think he, he deserves his shot, but, you know, he's the guy for me right now. And, I'm, you know, if I beat him, I, it definitely definitely puts me in a great position to uh, to take that next step and put, put forward my case that I belong in there, you know. I mean, it's an intriguing matchup on a couple of different fronts, man, you know, uh, especially from a fan's perspective. I mean, if you look at you two guys, you know, as a matchup on paper and just, you know, skill and toughness and everything, I mean, you look at even like your short MMA career so far, all of your wins have come by finish. Uh, and, the, and the one loss in your record, uh, you know, a finish uh, to, uh, on yourself, obviously, as well there too. Uh, and for John, very similar. All of his wins, uh, all of them coming by way of finish except for one. And him himself uh, only being finished sort of one time. So when you sort of look at it, it, you couldn't be sort of surprised if this fight ends in the first round super quick. Mm-hmm. You couldn't be surprised if it goes five full rounds like either way, you know, given the finishing prowess that you guys both have, but also being very hard guys to sort of finish like – just sort of thinking about that, have you sort of got a bit of like a gut feeling as to where you think at this moment, like how you think the fight's going to play out? Man, I don't, I, I don't know. Like, I don't, yeah, I, I actually didn't know that, that all of his uh, wins came by finish, but it makes sense. Except for one, except for the one. So you've got the 100% success finishing record so far. John all but <laughs> one, so it's still pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, no, I, knew, I know he's dangerous, bro, you know. Um and you just got to treat him as dangerous, but not also, um, you know, I, I'm not, it's not like I'm afraid to get hit, you know. Um, I don't, obviously don't want to be hit, but I'm not afraid of it, you know. So if if that if that happens, then I'm, I'm confident that I've got the defenses to, you know, um, I've seen a lot of shots in my time, bro. I've been doing this for 16 years. So, you know, it's not like I know how to take a shot, but I think, um, you know, I, I, I think I have the experience to maybe mitigate the damage, you know. Um, so yeah, like look, if if he catches me, he catches me. That's the fight game, you know. Um, but I, I I believe that I can catch him as well. And man, whatever whichever way it goes, I know he's going to come to fight. I'm going to come to fight. And yeah, I'm uh, I'm going to do my best to put him away. But at the same time, like if it goes five rounds, that's what that's what it's going to be. Do you think there's a particular key for you winning this fight? 
No, bro. No. I like it. How do you know until you're in there? Like I've got my, um, I've got my strategy that I'm planning on implementing, which I obviously, I don't really want to talk about. Yeah, we'll keep tight with on the strategy. I'll forgive you, you know for that I mean? for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, like I'll have my general strategy, but I've got to be flexible on that too. Like if it doesn't, if, if that's not working, then I've, you know, I've got a plan B and a plan C if I need to. And yeah, all good. And now you've been quoted in the past as saying um, that you're driven by regret, you know, essentially that, you know, you judge yourself uh, on your achievements. I'm going back to 2018 here, I believe, uh, with the, the Fight News Australia that you said you were driven by regret. And essentially the way I interpreted that was, you know, you judge yourself, you know, on your achievements and, and how, you know, you expect yourself to put 100% of everything, you know, that uh, that you can into every single one of those fights and you don't want to sort of live with regret uh, if you don't yeah. put 100% of those fights. That was obviously back in your sort of Muay Thai days. I'm assuming that's something, you know, a very similar sentiment that you would carry over now uh, as an MMA pro. Yeah, I think I think what that would have meant, I don't exactly remember the article, to be honest, um, but I think it would be like I obviously don't want to regret not having a go. You know, it's so easy to live in fear of like what if, you know, like what if I don't and you, you see it all the time and people just make they get they get stuck in just a, a state of indecision because they don't want to take the risk of something you know and I'm at this point especially where I'm at now is like I would rather have a crack and come short than just not have a crack at all like I sort of think about the you know those some of the guys that I grew up with that are just doing the same thing and you know like potential there that was never used um I'm like nah man let's let's have, let's have a go let's just see what happens even if we don't make it let's just see what happens and give it our best now instead of asking you for a fight prediction can, can i make a prediction for you in terms of how this fight's going to go down now i'm obviously impartial here i, I just i got no sort of dog in the race or anything like that i'd love to see a good fight whoever comes out on top but for yourself for a finish how about hand clinch it was John and then the big kick up the middle, man. Now the, chin. the moves are all learning from John Bones Jones, man. Like, imagine if we break that one out, mate. Or a little one to the liver from the hand clincher, one at the middle. Like, let's let's get that going. Bro, it, the, the thing is, imagine if I pulled that off. Bro, <laughs> if, if I pulled that off and I did that, the worst thing is he's going to get the credit for it, you know? Yeah. Like, man, how, do you know, how do you know that I wasn't working on doing this all along? And then along came Johnny Bones Jones. Showed this thing at the seminar. I went, bro, giving away all my tricks. You yeah, know, like a like, wizard man for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that that would be funny. But uh, yeah, I, I look, I, I doubt it. I doubt that'll happen. But uh, yeah. Well, hey, let, let's just keep it in the back pocket and sort of see what happens. Uh, <laughs> let, let's just hope for a good fight all round. But uh, it's definitely there. Yeah. So I mean, just one last thing before I let you go, too, man. Your last fight, you know, after you had that win. You said the UFC was clearly on your mind and everything. Obviously, we've got this middleweight title coming up, uh, the middleweight title fight coming up, so not looking too far past that. Um, you know, but you win this fight, you become the middleweight champion. Have you got a roadmap in your mind as to what you hope the rest of your 2024 looks like going forward? Bro, well, I, I, I hope if I get the win, I hope the rest of my career is spent in the UFC. That's, yeah, I... I I don't. I don't really want to hang around at this local. No, I shouldn't. Shouldn't call it a local level. Eternal is the promotion in in Australia. Australia, New Zealand, it's the promotion. Um, but I don't want to hang around on this regional circuit any longer than I have to. Like, I I want to get going, man. I want to make a run. I want to give it my best shot. Like, um, you know, time moves quick for us, bro. Like, before you know it, I'll be older and I won't. I'll, you know. I won't have those uh, those miles left on the clock. So while I do, let's let's maximise it and spend it spend every minute that I possibly can in the top promotion and you know striving for greatness. No, I completely understand that sentiment, mate. And uh, all the best to you from March 16 on the Gold Coast, the big title fight. John Martin Fraser defends his title against Ben Johnson, who joined us here today. So thank you very much, Ben. Uh, all the best, March 16, man. Uh, hopefully for yourself, uh, we see you on the other side with that title around your waist, and uh, we'll do this all again, man. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. Eh? Much appreciated, brother.